I am Dr. R. Krishnamini, Associate Professor of Commerce. I am going to teach about Corporate Accounting. This is the core, core course paper 9. This is the introduction chapter. First of all, we must know what is meant by Body Corporate. Body Corporate means which has been or is incorporated under some statute and which has a perpetual su succession and a common seal and is a legal entity apart from the members constituting it. Or generally speaking, body corporate means a body which has been or is incorporated under some statute and which has a perpetual suggestion and a common seal and is a legal entity apart from its members constituting it. This is the term what is meant by body corporate. Next, the characteristics of a corporate. One is a voluntary association of person for any body corporate. This characteristics is suitable and separate legal entity common seal perpetual succession limited liability transferable shares dedicated management this is suitable to all the corporate sectors and when you say about the characteristics of a company the main characteristics here in company it is a distinct legal person, quite distinct and separate from its members. It has an independent existence. Next, the liability of members is limited to the extent of the face value of shares held by them. Then third, it has perpetual succession. That is, the members of the company may keep on changing from time to time but this does not affect the company's continuity it go forever the company may rent for forever men may come men may can go the next one the shares of the company are freely transferable except in the case of private private limited company the next the company being a legal person is capable of owing enjoying disposing of the property in its own name. Another one, the company being a separate body can shoe and be shoe in its own name. Next, though a company it is an artificial person, it acts through human being which, is, which are called directors of the company. There is a divorce between ownership and the management. Next one, it is a voluntary association of person usually for profit. The last one, the company can buy its own shares under certain conditions. The me meaning of corporate accounting. <laughs> corporate accounting refers to the measurement recording and interpretation of financial information and data relating to a limited company. The next one, you will see the different kinds of companies. There are three types of companies. One under the formations, another one in view of liability and the third one in view of public investment. From the point of view of formations, the first step is chartered companies. Those companies which are incorporated under a special character by the king. For example, example for this company is the East India Company. Such a companies are rarely formed nowadays. And the second company is the statutory companies. 
These companies are formed by a special act of the legislatures or parliament. For example of this company is the Reserve Bank of India. The third type is registered companies. Such a companies which are incorporated under the Companies Act of two, uh, 2013 or were registered under the previous uh, Companies Act of 1956. That is called as a registered companies. And from the point of view of liability, limited company, in case in such a case, such a limited companies, the liability of each member is limited to the extent of the face value of the shares held by him. And next company, guarantee company. The liability of a member of such a company is limited to the amount he has undertaken to contribute to the assets of the company in the event of its wound up. Unlimited companies. These are nothing but a large partnership registered under the Companies Act and the members, just like a partners, have unlimited liability. And both their share contributions as well as their private property are at stake. And when the company is to be owned up, from the point of view of public investment, first company is the private company. The private company means a company which by its articles restricts the right of uh, right to transfer its shares um, the second one the, it limits the number of its members and the limit uh, limit is 200 excluding the past and present employee of the company who are also the members of the company third one it prohibits any invitation to the public to subscribe any shares in a, shares in or adventures of the company such a company is so called as a private company. And public company, public companies are those companies which are not a private company in a simple way. You can say it. Uh, all the above restrictions are not imposed on such a companies. It has a minimum paid up capital of rupees 5 lakhs or such a higher paid up capital as may be prescribed. That company is called as a public company. And here also, some um, companies deemed to be a public, some private company will be deemed to be a public company in some circumstances. If the 25% or more of paid up capital is held by one or more body corporate, or if it holds 25% of the paid up share capital of the public company, or if the average annual turnover is less than, uh, less than uh, uh, 25 crores, or if the if it invites deposits from the public or renew deposit from the public other than its members, directors or their relatives. Those companies can also deem to be public, the private companies, which comes under those on the set above circumstances. It is also called as a public company. Next one is um, the Rights of stockholders. The stockholders have the right to sell the shares. Stockholders have right to vote on the directors nominated by the board. The, they, write, they have the right to nominate directors. The stockholders have right to the right to receive the dividend if they are declared by the company. The right to purchase the new shares issued by the company. And their rights to what whatever the assets remains after the liquidations, they can have the rights, the stockholders have the right to hold those assets. This is the some of the rights of the stockholders. Another one, who is called one person is called as a corporate officer. Who is a corporate officer? A corporate officer is a person employed by a corporation who hold an office such as a president. Vice President, Secretary or Treasurer, Officers are appointed to their position by a corporation's Board of Director Office and Board of Directors, Officers, responsibility vary depending on what powers of the corporation are specifically given by them. Officers or agents of the corporation 
and therefore they have a fiduciary right to the uh, fiduciary rights to the corporation those corporations are called the uh, the fiduciary right is called as the duty of loyalty and the duty of care so those that person is called as a, a corporate officer the next one the formation of a company formation of a company to form the company we need some of the requirements or we have to prepare some documents the first foremost document is the memorandum of association memorandum of association and articles of associations these two are the important document to form the company so here any seven or more persons where the company to be formed will be a private company to or more person associated for any lawful purpose so this um, this for both a private company as well as public company we must uh, require the first document is called as a memorandum of association in this memorandum they may uh, informed as per the sections of the sections uh, law as per law in section 4 of the companies act 2013 memorandum of a company shall state name of the company the name itself uh, if it is a private limited they have to mention the term private limited if it is a public limited they have to mention the name as a limited in the last of the word last of the uh, name of the companies uh, then and another one they have to um register the the state in which the registered office of the company is to be situated it should be placed in the memorandum and the object of the company is proposed to be incorporated the liability of the members of the company whether it is a limited or it is unlimited then amount of share capital which the company is to be registered so the memorandum of the company shall be in a respective form specified in a table a b c d and e in schedule 1 as may be applicable to such a companies so this is the main document prepared by the companies to form a company memorandum of association the second one is called as an articles of associations this is given under section 5 of the companies act 2013 the articles of the company shall contains the regulations for management of the company the articles of the company shall be in respective form specified in the table after the memorandum f g h i j in schedule 1 as may be applicable to such a company and the third one the statement of the nominal capital in case it exceeds 1 crore a certificate from the central government for permission to be issued issue of capital the issue of capital the statement of the nominal capital if it exceeds 1 crore they have to get the certificate from central government and another one the list of directors with their name in full addresses and occupations and ages age about all those directors if a separate list of directors is not filed subscribes to the memorandum or deemed to be the first directors and if the directors are appointed by the articles or named in the prospectus they are written consent to act as a directors and written undertaking to take up and pay for their qualification shares if any and another one the notice notice of the address of the registered office this is also important this may also be given within 30 days after the incorporations or on the day from which the company commences its business whichever is earlier and another one a statutory declaration if uh, the statutory declarations by an advocate the supreme court or maybe a high court 
or it may be an uh, autonomy or pleader entity entitled uh, to appear before high court or a chartered accountant uh, practicing in India and who is engaged in the formation of a company or by a person who is named in the articles as a director, manager or secretary of the company that all the requirements of the law for registration have been duly complied, compiled with the filing of the above documents and the payment necessary fees. If the registrar is satisfied that everything is in order, he will register the company and issue the certificate of incorporation. The certificate brings the company into existence as a legal person. So it grants the legal personality, corporate existence and perpetual suggestions to the company. Perpetual succession to the company. It acts as its own. And another one, they have to issue the prospectus. After all completions of the commencement, everything, they can issue the prospectus. The prospectus may be for the shares or debentures. Any body corporate can issue the prospectus and there are a lot of uh, everything will be uh, placed in the prospectus. The, the total history may be placed in the prospectus. Another one, they have to prepare the books of accounts. The books of accounts, a proper books of accounts, a proper books of accounts have to be presented. It may be a statutory books or it may be a statistical books. A stra statutory books, here the registrar, investment held on their name, uh, the minute books and annual returns and uh, some of the important uh, documents, a register of fixed deposits and uh, another index for all the members to be a registered, a register of a, a renewed and it may be uh, duplicate certificates have to be attached. All the statutory books and all the stat statistical books, share applications, allotment book, share call book, debenture interest book, register of uh, the document that sealed, register of uh, share warrant, all the certificate books, debentures as well as shares. So all these, uh, after co completion of all those documents, they can form the company. The company formations can be completed. The next one, the difference between private company and public company. We have already seen some of the what is meant by private company and what is meant by public company. The minimum and maximum number of members in the case of private company, minimum is two and maximum in the private company is 200. And in the case of public company, the minimum number of members is seven and maximum is unlimited. The maximum is unlimited. And the second one, the issue of prospectors. Issue of prospectors. Prospectors cannot, in the private company, it cannot be invited to the public. But in the case of public company, it must issue a prospectus, a compulsory one. They have to uh, present the prospectus compulsorily. And another difference transfer of shares. In private company, it is restricted by the articles of associations, but it is freely transferable in the case of public company. The another, another difference, commencement of business. Commence, in private company, can allot the shares 
and commence the business after getting the certificate of incorporation from the register of companies. But every company cannot allow shares unless it is collected the minimum subscription. It has received at least 5% of the nominal value of shares supplied in case on its applications can commence the business only after getting the certificate of commencement. The next one, number of directors. In the case of private company limited, at least two directors, whereas in public company is required to have at least three directors. Quorum of a meeting. The quorum for a meeting of a private company is two, while five members constitute a quorum in the case of public company. So, 5 in the case of members is up to 1000 and 15 in the case of more than 1000 up to 5000 but 30 in the case of members exceeds 5000. This is the for private uh, public company and name of the company I already informed a uh, private limited the word private limited is placed in the last of the name of the company private limited and in the case of public company the limited have to be placed after the last word limited and another one the securities in public public offers to be a listed in stock exchange is not applicable in private company Securities offered in the public offer to be listed in recognized stock exchanges. Restrictions on managerial remunerations. There is no restrictions in private company. But in public company, it restricted to 11% of the net profit or at least 30 lakhs per annum depending upon the paid up capital. This is the difference between private company and public company. The last one, I think with this we can close our class today. So, if you students, if you have any doubt, you can ask me. Okay, thank you girls.